Thursday. So, and this is a special meeting that we called over the past several weeks. We've been talking about the uh, Ike uh, fire and the renovation and, and the restoration. And over the past several weeks at several of the committee meetings, then we talked about, you know, the need for the possibility of additional meetings. So that's why we're here tonight. So again, thanks. Sorry for taking the, uh, somebody already reminded me it's the first day here in a while that it hasn't rained. So, but we have some critical important things to talk about tonight. Uh, we really want to stay focused. We want to, you know, hear everybody's comments and such, but we're not going to get down into the details into the rabbit holes because be in, uh, just to remind everybody too, we're, we're really, st we have decisions to make tonight or consensus, reach consensus tonight on basically three things for sure. And that would be the entranceway, the location, and then the, the uh, building new classrooms where the modulars used to be. And then definitely the electrical system as far as renovation, but we can get into a little bit more discussion on the renovation. But the reason I'm saying this is I want to remind everybody that we don't have to make reach consensus and make decisions on all these things tonight because we really haven't even meet, met or reached the de preliminary design stage. We're, we're still in a scoping stage, but it's important because of the process that we're going to work through here because of the fire that we do reach some consensus on a few things tonight. So we're going to open up the agenda and we're going to go first to Stefan, who is, uh, I'll say the manager, the point of contact with the fire and water restoration. He's going to give a uh, update. And the thing I want to point out here also is, is that his report is not final. We are just trying to feed the information that's available to the board and the community as it comes available. But again, this report is not final. So, Stefan, are you available and able to start with your report? Yes. Do you want to review I mean, the report first? Yeah, if you would, please. Is that right, Mr. Vukovic? We want Stefan to go first? Yes, sir. If that's okay with you, sir. Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to give a brief summary of the MEP report, and then I'm going to introduce. Kevin Karnak with Sergeant Electric, who's going to be able to maybe give a little more of a, br a brief in, uh, summary and then maybe able to handle some questions specifically in regards to the report. So to start with the HVAC systems, the HVAC systems were inspected and are currently uh, they were assessed and they're currently being cleaned, uh, your unit ventilators. They're, in regards to future renovations, there is nothing of a concern with your central heating system or your, which is your boilers or your unit ventilators. Uh, they were replaced in 2013 and uh, are, have no current issues in regards to renovations. The cleaning aspect of the mechanicals uh, is going to take approximately a week. We're getting about six units completed a day that started yesterday, and uh, everything's working out as planned. So there's nothing to report back uh, regarding your mechanicals. The Plumbing was has was inspected yesterday and today, so all of your sanitary drains uh, were scoped and cameraed, and the diagnosis was very uh, surprising for the age of the piping, but a very good report in terms of longevity of the lifespan. The current state of the piping is expected to last at least another 20 to 25 years. There was no significant buildup, calcifications, pitting of the pipes that was noticed. Uh, usually we would see a certain amount of buildup that would restrict the flow of the piping. None of that was visualized through the scope. Um, so 
that kind of gives you some information. We were concerned about that possibly being needed to be renovated while we were uh, completing our other repairs. So that gives a clean bill of health in regards to your sanitary uh, inspection. In regard, the only other plumbing that we haven't in, been inspecting was your water fountains and your automatic uh, systems for your urinals and toilets. And that is the process has begun with the distributors and each unit will be pulled apart, will be inspected. If it's deemed salvageable, it will be cleaned and reinstalled. And if it's not, then it will be re replaced. So simple process uh, in regards to your plumbing for our scope. And I don't think that there is anything else to really talk about unless there's specific questions in regards to maybe some bathroom renovations, but that's, that's separate in regards to this report. In regards to the electrical, which is probably the biggest conversation that we need to have is the electrical distribution system, the branch circuit wiring, lighting systems, lighting controls, fire alarms, telecommunications, uh, and then ancillary, which is your paging clock systems, data control, et cetera. So this is probably where I want to open it up to a, maybe a little bit more of direction from the school board of what we want to talk about. And then I can kind of bring Kevin in to answer maybe some specific questions of how we want to proceed, um, you know, through Q&A or just an, an overview or maybe kind of help me out a little bit on how you want to proceed with that. Well, I'd say at this point, Stefan, let's how about if you give a, a brief overview and uh, summary of, of the electrical. OK, so a brief overview of the electrical. So the there, we have a 600 amp service that now supplies the school the wiring the branch wiring to all of your plugs switches lighting is original to the school and it has degraded significantly and is going to be replaced on the west wing which is the source wing through the insurance carrier and what we are scoping to present to the school district for replacement of the east hallway so the branch wiring uh, is a cloth wrapped wire that is brittle and is something that needs to be replaced for uh, moving forward and can solve some issues that that we're dealing with now with reinstalling lighting into bad wiring, which is just going to cause problems later down the line. Okay. And, and I guess to, to, you know, further clarify what, what, what you're suggesting and what, what the, I should say, what the inspection or the evaluation has shown is, like you said, the insurance company is going to replace the uh, wiring in in its entirety in the west wing and, I, and i'm going to call the east wing what you're calling the east wing the south wing we call it the okay. south wing okay. sure. Uh, sure. you're suggesting or the outcome of your evaluation is showing that we should replace all the wiring in the entire school i guess in, correct which would be that south wing so and what better time to do it than now and i uh I guess the other thing I'm going to say too, before I go to Walter, I saw you raise your hand, Walter. Um, I, I spent two hours over walking around the school on Sunday afternoon, just trying to familiarize myself with, you know, the schemes that we'll see here later about the entryway, and you know, just looking at the condition of the entire school. And and what really stands out is. The school was built, there's a there's a cornerstone on the front of the school and it says 1955. And we're talking with Greg Trout, uh, our buildings and ground supervisor, that school has never been uh, totally renovated. So, you know, quick math, the, the, at least the west wing down to the boiler room and the south wing is 65 to 66 years old. 
the uh, south wing was constructed, I believe you're, you're saying in your report, I think in 1963 or 1964. So again, it's, it's nearly 60 years old. So until you really go and look around, and I'm not, I'm gonna finish up my comment by saying that our custodial staff and our, our maintenance staff has done a tremendous job over the decades of maintaining and cleaning this school. But when you really start looking like you have with your uh, inspection and now your report, the true age of the building shows and what you're finding. So, Walter, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, my question to um, Stefan is, how much uh, is the three-phase power requirement um, in that building or is that entrance a three-phase entrance to start with? Uh, I would, Kevin, do you, can you comment on that? I think, I don't know if Kevin can, if he can hear me or not right now, but yes, the the current service is a 600 amp three phase service that would that, that comes into the school. Regardless of that, the, the service that we have now is maxed. We do not have any room to grow through the service. The modular classrooms were had a temporary pull. So the so the service for the modular cl classrooms had to be on a separate utility pool to, to be able to handle it. So any future renovations uh, that now have to come out of this service of the school have to now be upgraded to be able to handle any, any, any renovation. Any renovation. Uh, Stefan, I think your colleague Kevin is trying to join us. I think he's getting his speakers worked out. Kevin, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can, yeah, Kevin. We can hear you. Great. So, Kevin, do you want to talk maybe a little bit about the service uh, <laughs> three phase and w what it can handle, what it can handle, and the you know maybe the, the feeders that have to be created to to handle even an interior renovation of the school. Uh, of the main school not in, and considering an addition yes i can so yeah currently the the service is a three phase uh 600 amp service uh 208 volt and my, my estimator lou is online there now you can see his picture up there um from sergeant electric he's with us as well um so yes the the service is a 600 amp three phase and Moving forward, that service uh, is pretty much maxed out for what the school has right now, okay? So um, the the area that burned, the four classrooms and the mods, those um, had a separately derived uh, service on a pole uh, down at the end of the street. And uh, that was a 200 amp capacity. So... I hear that, you know, you guys are going to maybe add on to the school uh, for future electrical needs uh, at a minimum uh, right now to replace what you had. You would need a 200 amp um, circuit that would have to run through the school to tie into that addition. Um, you know, there's a couple codes that go into this. You know, that, 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 that system that you had outside was a modular unit, which was mean it was designed originally to be temporary. And that's why you had a temporary service out there for those classrooms. So if you would add on to the school, you know, new building codes are going to tell you that you need to derive your power from from the original service of the building, which it is outdated and and maxed out. So at a minimum, just with replacing what you had, uh, you would need to upgrade your service to a, a thousand amp service. Okay. Now, as far as provisions, sorry, as far as provisions for the future, um, that raises a few questions to us as far as, you know, that 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 mod unit had heating, electric heating, and it had electric cooling. Uh, your school currently has uh, boilers that are fairly newer uh, and hydronic. So you have hydronic heating throughout your entire school. 
Uh, you only have one other area in your school, which is the administration area that had uh, a cooling unit, um, I believe, just for those two rooms. So, you know, it's just a question as far as if you were going to upgrade your service to the building, whether you were going to, you know, add air conditioning to, to the school. Um, and that's a separate conversation to have, you know, with an engineer is what you would like to do. And that would probably determine the size of the service. So this all kind of ties together as far as, you know, upgrades. So your bottom line then is that we've got to, we've got to change the, um, uh, the main entrance and take it up to a thousand amps. Uh, to accommodate your, your, um, your addition. Um, I mean, I haven't seen any prints or anything on what exactly you're you're wanting to do but at a minimum uh yes that would be the case well and you make a good point kevin i you know I, the, again we don't want to go down deep into the rabbit holes tonight we want to just try to get some direction and stuff but i appreciate your comments and then bring it up about the air conditioning and we have two other people raising their hand so Tamara, go ahead Okay, so um, is the insurance going to cover that upgrade to a thousand amps? So the insurance company, as of right now, will not incur the cost of an upgrade because what you had before was a temporary pull. So until we get into negotiations with the insurance carrier regarding the code upgrades and how that will kind of trickle down to what is needed, what you're putting back, because it kind of is a gray area because we're not putting back exactly what you had. If we're putting back modulars is what the insurance company is going to pay for, then we would need to upgrade the service. So that is a question that we can pose to the carrier and, and we might be able to negotiate that. But as of right now, that's still kind of in limbo and we don't have a clear answer. Okay. And then my second question is, you suggested that we replace every, all the electrical in the other wing. Um, is there a way to not replace that? Like, is it, could we not replace that? There, so th what we experienced in the in the West Wing was that when we were taking the lighting down that was damaged, we were tripping breakers because the wiring was starting to, uh, the insulation was falling apart, tripping a breaker. So okay. I understand that. So just to to cut to the chase, my my thought is that. Um, that I am thinking that maybe we should ask the insurance company to pay for the other wing because we wouldn't be replacing it otherwise. And if we can't put new electrical with the old electrical, then we would have not replaced any of this if there weren't a fire. So is there some way that something like that can be negotiated? We can uh, definitely pose the question. Because, yeah, we wouldn't have had to do anything of any of this if there wasn't a fire. Understood. No, I understand. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are, that's just my, those are my two questions. So I do. Yeah. I would like that to be looked into if at all possible. Okay. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Cameron. Good question. Paul. Yeah. Terry, um, we're going to go down a, a dozen rabbit holes with something like this. Um, this is a technical question. Um, the board can't vote on, on the AMP services. Um, I think we need to move on. I agree. Stefan, is there anything else from your report that you want to comment on? Kevin or Lou, is there anything else that you want to talk about in regards to the electric? Yeah, I would like uh, to mention um, when Kevin and I were looking at the main 600 amp distribution service in the boiler room, there was a lot of water coming out of that panel box and rusting out the bottom. And actually, you could see the water running on the floor. I don't think it was coming in the service entrance conduits. It must be coming in through the wall into the panel. Um, so that's a whole nother scenario or something that's going to need repaired eventually. Um, there must be a leak in the back wall 
be that that's down below grade that far. And I know the asphalt's paved up to the building, so it's got to be groundwater coming in through that panel. It is rusting it out a good bit. Okay, again, we'll make note of that. Thanks, Lou. That's definitely something to include in our, our design. Yeah, and, you know, move, moving through this um, assessment from uh, uh, the engineer, um, this is th th this is kind of like a moving uh, piece right now. And, you know, what the engineers have done here is just to explain, they, ha they have outlined deficiencies in your building. Uh, we all see that, you know, th there's definitely some issues. But, you know, we want to make sure that any decisions we make as far as putting the price that, we, we want to open up communication to say, um, you know, on a few systems, I mean, schools have a lot of systems. And in this case, for us, we're involved in a lot of these systems. We're responsible for these systems. We, we are the ones that would be repairing them, upgrading them, X, Y, Z. So we just want to make sure that we open up conversations when we have questions as far as, you know, let's give an example like your clock system. Your clock system was, was affected uh, directly by this fire. So, you know, whether the so clock system worked or not in entirely, it needs to be replaced. When you replace one clock out of that system, um, you, you have to upgrade it to 2021. It was probably installed in 1954, and over the years, maybe one or two clocks have broken. So now, you know, the insurance company is going to say, yeah, we're going to replace this uh, clock system we're not going to replace it back to 1960 or 1954. We're going to replace it to 2021. So does that mean uh, a new analog clock system in the entire building or a digital clock system? That's the decision you guys have to make and let us know, and then we can price it accordingly. Right. Okay. Good. Tom, did you raise your hand again, or is it still up? Okay. Sorry. Stop. That's all right. Stephanie, anything else on the report? Uh, let me see. So I think we touched on the electrical. Go through. Okay. So my only comment in regards to this report is that it is an outline of what the current codes are today and what systems are in place currently in the building. So it doesn't necessarily mean that these are glaring or illegal issues. We just are showing and putting to paper an examples of a building envelope report. So we just need to go through the report and, I, and tomorrow if we're walking through, we can kind of have a little bit more of uh, set guidelines to be able to tell Sergeant Electric, this is what we want you to focus on. This is what we need you to price because as of right now, time is of the essence. We need to make sure that we can have the correct systems quoted, that we can talk, that, that then Sergeant can talk to, to their distributors. We can then get costs approved. And then finally, the production side. So we just want to make sure that this project is manageable, that we're focusing on uh, items that, that you want to focus on and that we can provide the best quality product because each ex um, specific item in, a, in electrical has a large conversation to, to tackle because of the antiquated system that is currently here. So we just need to make sure that we set that we have a game plan of when is this specific hey let's talk about the paging and clock clock system for 25 minutes a half hour <laughs> so that's just something that I, that is my last comment in regards to this report uh to be able to just go through it thoroughly right and, and i'm glad you clarified that too and maybe you, i probably should have done this when i introduced you and and correct me if i'm wrong in what i'm going to say you were hired by the insurance company, correct? Uh, I, I, not, not specifically, but... Well, just for a minute, explain your uh, position in this process. 
Well, I'm the general contractor of the restoration as th through the school district and anything that needs to be done while that we're here, we're trying to help the situation. Since we're getting into certain areas that were affected by the fire and soot damage, we now have to be kind of involved in a broader scale of a conversation to be able to deliver a final product that's suitable to the school district. So we don't want to just come in and follow an insurance scope of what's exactly approved by the insurance and be ignorant to everything else. We want to, to demonstrate that we can bring problems that are currently here to your attention and solve them. So that way, when it, whenever date that I hand the keys back to you, you're happy and you don't have to worry about six months from now, this is broken because we didn't fix this while we were going through these extensive renovations. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Cause there's probably a lot on the call that wasn't aware of your, what, what your position is. So thanks for clarifying that. And Mr. Vukovic, does it make any sense to go to number two on the agenda while we're talking about all these systems? And we'll yeah. try to get some consensus on the level of renovation to Eisenhower. Y yes, Mr. Kerr, I think it makes a lot. I think it makes a lot. Um, okay. And his team's on the call. I think we should have some discussion. That way, we know how to proceed tomorrow when we meet with Stefan and the architects at Ike. I think this would help our conversation and try to build some consensus. If you're okay with that, sir. I am. I. I yep. And I'll just start it on. Uh, what we have on the agenda is, is what level of renovation, and this is in addition to the fire restoration. This is actually renovating uh, some of the systems, as Stefan explained, existing in the school. And we've discussed at previous committee meetings over the past several weeks that, you know, it's an unfortunate opportunity to fire, uh, to do a renovation to this school but as we have mentioned before, we already have the students out of the school and they, they're going to be out of there for the re remainder of this uh, school year. And, you know, we thought what better time. And as I would mentioned earlier, the school was built in the 1950s. The one wing was built in the 19, early 1960s. It's never been renovated. As you're hearing, there are uh, issues with you know the electrical and, and such and then when you do a walk around the building you start seeing the other things that are 60 plus years old so we have some things listed there we'd like to as mr bukovic mentioned there's going to be a meeting tomorrow with the administration and bucard horn and Stefan and some others to start into some of these finer details so what I'd like to do is reach some consensus on redoing the electrical system in the entire school, uh, looking at and getting a price to replace all the windows, looking at uh, and getting a price on replacing the classroom doors. There, There is some flooring uh, that would need replaced or could be replaced. And then any other ancillary things that come out of our more detailed discussions. You know, those are the higher level uh, systems. It, as Stefan had mentioned, the HVAC system is pretty much intact. Uh, you know, the PA system, the clock system needs replaced. We would put a, uh, a smoke detection system in at that time with that. So, Mr. Bukovic, do you have anything to add before we ask for comments or yes sir uh, yeah. I think I'll, the only thing i'll add is as we have this conversation it's important that we have stefan's team on the call as well as elijah's because this all has to go together yes we're talking about you know repairing ike to the um the status it once was but we have to have a real conversation about to what extent right and what you're comfortable with and how that fits in, in line with the entryway way or anything else we want to do so these are important conversations and mr kerr if i understood stefan's comments uh, it looks like the sewer's good, uh, but we 
we have to start with electrical and at this position, you know, all I'm asking, I know you know this already, uh, but it was pretty clear from, I believe, Lewis and Kevin saying, look, if you're going to add an entryway or even classrooms, you're going to have to upgrade the electric. So we have to just kind of guide our um, Stefan's team as well as Elijah so they could do their part as far as us building a vision, uh, what we do. We don't have to answer all the decisions tonight, but we do need to get some sort of consensus about what we want to do there because then I think if you agree, Mr. Kerr, that'll help Eli and his team do their job as well as Stefan and them do theirs. Right. So I guess my question is, if we decide or just get consensus on redoing the electrical system, the PA system, the clocks, and the smoke detection system, is that adequate for tonight? Stefan, what helps you the most? And Eli, I, to me, I think that's a big step in the right direction. Like, because um, we're not going to have to decide everything, but I think that's a step in the right direction. But Stefan, Eli, I, I would defer to you as well. So, I think yes, there. We're since we're still determining the insurance scope with with the carrier. We aren't a hundred percent sure yet exactly everything that we've listed is going to be touched by the electricians through the insurance scope, but whether or not that might just be replacing. So say if it's the clock, the insurance company might be replacing a clock. There might not be anything wrong with all of the wiring for your clock system, but is now a good time to replace the wiring to the for the clock system so that you don't have to worry about it for 50 years? Or do we want to want to just replace clocks and then in maybe five, 10 years, you have a wiring issue that needs to be then have an extensive renovation. So if I will kind of give this back to Kevin and Lou to kind of go through based off of the engineer report and talk about any specific questions that they might have and then if there's i don't know if you want to go through maybe one by one and talk and then just talk about it specifically and then maybe that might give us some better answers with tomorrow's meeting to kind of give us a direction so let me intervene okay so the clock system we did get quoted on that and the new system is going to be wireless okay, okay. that solves uh, answers part of your question about the wiring going bad later so they're just wireless clocks that will sync back to a head end piece of equipment um i mean once we mount the clocks you can move them anywhere you want okay so, so why don't you start lou and kevin with and start with the electrical distribution system so start with the service talk about how a you know, we need a thousand amp minimum, but if they are wanting to possibly 10 years from now, maybe do an upgrade to for air conditioning or 15 years from now, do something, do they maybe want to go to a 1200 or 1400 or, hey, you can do a thousand now and then in 10 years you can upgrade it, but is that a smart decision or not? So that's kind of, I think, the direction that I would like it to go. Well, I think the thousand amp would carry pretty much what you want to do, depending on your, um, you know, what the HVAC is designed at. So, you know, I, I think a thousand is going to have to take care of probably your needs, depending on obviously the design of the HVAC. So that should, I think, be adequate for the future for what you're doing. Um, you know, Going forward, like Kevin said, if they do the addition, we want to make sure we have enough um, power to take care of that and any future needs. You know, right now we're pricing all the agendas that the report came back from CJL. So, you know, um, the West Wing is going to have obviously new lighting and new lighting controls. Um, okay, so, so so maybe I don't know if is, does Walter or Elijah want to maybe say something in regards to that yeah go ahead Walter yeah the, the question I had was um, when you're talking about that additional capacity um, you're also talking about LED lighting and so um, maybe the question is rhetorical as Tom said um, you know maybe we're getting too far down in the weeds but but I would certainly 
uh, raise that question if we go to all LED lighting do you still need a thousand amps uh, coming into the building well no but to get what you gain on saving on wattage you can use it for whatever other you know HVAC and other loads that are going to increase in the future so it's going to benefit you um, so the 600 amp obviously was adequate for where you are now but don't forget if you put the modular trailers back in or an addition like kevin said you have the 200 amp service coming from another utility source which if you connect that or depending on your design i think tomorrow will help determine some of that if it's connecting to the building it has to come off the existing building service so that's all pending design yeah let's let's we're down the rabbit hole let's get back up out of the rabbit hole because but i agree maybe we have to decide whether we want ac and then we'll have to decide, and, and that's later on the agenda, is whether how many classrooms we're going to put back on in the place of the modular. So, uh, okay, no, I, I, think, I mean, I can, continue, I can continue with the electrical stuff, but I don't want you want to take all that time up. So, right. I'm going to keep moving forward. I mean, obviously, we're pricing a new fire alarm system, a new clock system, um, what, a new paging system, right, Kevin? And then we did talk to um, your IT director, Randy O'Neill, today, and we're going to set up a meeting Monday with him just on a phone call conversation, conference call. Um, you know, the West Wing is going to get new data lines. The East Wing, I don't think, was affected by it, but we talked to him. At, like, now's the time maybe he wants to upgrade because I think he did say that that school was the first school that ever had internet wired into it. So he knows that it's kind of inefficient right now and needs some upgrades, but this would be the time to do it. Now, my understanding is the insurance, you know, would probably take care of the West Wing, which I don't know that, but that was the part that was damaged that needs replaced. The East Wing would be really an upgrade on the school's end, I would assume. You know, obviously. Right. And we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll decide this stuff tomorrow. Right. Uh, yeah, and just for, sorry, but just for the purpose of the call, and I know we don't want to get too far into these things, um, what, what we're currently working on, to be clear, um, is that the, the engineer's scope that you guys received, we received an updated one. And on the updated one, it, it, it's, it's narrowing down more of recommendations um, or, and also needs that, that, that are affected by the fire. And, you know, um, for our purpose, there are a lot of systems in your building that have been affected that are going to have to be priced, repaired, or upgraded. Um, so, you know, the, there, there's 12 systems that are on this bullet point um, that need to be talked about. So that's a long conversation um, as far as what direction the school wants to take on every one of them. So right. we, can, we can go down that road tomorrow or another day not a problem but um yep. just so you know that's what we're working off of now right okay thank you so uh, and on my end on the estimating i'm going to price and break down every one of them as much as i can so that they won't have to come back and say well what's this cost what's this cost you'll have pretty much the menu in front of you with the insurance company it's going to take me a little bit of time but i think it's going to save us in the long run and they'll see what the east wing west wing all that comes to and somebody other than us will make that decision i'm assuming right okay thank you elijah you had your hand up yeah uh, i was gonna echo what uh walter was saying our engineers took a preliminary look at the um current service and the uh the building recommendations that we were already making that uh you wanted to replace your lighting to led um and but i would also and that you would probably be okay if you were just replacing everything with LED right now to stay below, that would bring you down below the 600. But as Lewis was saying, um, it's without taking a, a really close look at the addition that we, the addition or additions that we've proposed here, um, and without knowing the potential uh, additional services that you might put on there, like AC, which is a big one, um, we would we would still probably recommend that you go up to a thousand amp service right now, even if you might be able to cut it out under 600. Um, but that doesn't give you any room uh, for growth and um, 
I think a lot of the conversation is pushing towards this is this is the time to make that move on the uh, the service upgrade. Okay, thanks, Walter. You raise your hand again. No, um, I screwed up. I just didn't get the lower from the last time. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'm going to ask the the committee members and the board members that are on the call. Is, is anybody opposed to uh, moving forward with, I'll say pretty much a total renovation of the electrical system, including these other ancillary systems also? Go ahead, Cinda. It didn't, you didn't hear any opposition. You won't hear any opposition from me. I'm going to just say again that electrical systems are one of the most important things, in my opinion. And while we have things torn apart, there's, it makes absolutely no sense to not take care of those type of things now. So the only thing I'm concerned about is I would like to see some prices. But it, it is what it is. We need to have good, safe electrical systems. So you have no opposition from me. All right. Thank you, Senda. Uta. Um, thanks, Perry. I agree with Senda. I just think um, we definitely need to see prices and we want to make sure that um, we do enough so that we can accommodate um, needs um, of our students, of our teachers, how we might teach um, in the near future. Um, so in thinking about, um, you know, synchronous teaching, um, you know, this is the time to think about that. I just don't want to, I want to make sure that we don't go too far and put in things that we're never going to use. Um, so um, I'm confident that, um, you know, you and the committee are going to make sure that we make good decisions. But I agree, while we've got things open as much as they are um, in that building, this is the time to do that work. Okay, thank you. Ten good comments. Uh, the one thing I will say here, and I don't, do we need to make the decision or the consensus about the air conditioning tonight? If, and I'll ask either Elijah or Lou. I, I wouldn't say so, that you would need to make that the decision on air conditioning tonight. Um, whether or not you go with air conditioning, I, I think along the same lines that Lou was saying, um, with the additions and with the potential for any other um, loads that would be added to the building, HVAC or otherwise, um, I would still recommend you uh, move up to the 1,000 amp service um, Regardless, if you if you stay at 600, um, you're you're going to be limiting yourselves, and you're not sure when you would need to replace that. It, it may be five years, it may be 10 years, but uh, you've got a good school here um, that's going to last a while, and and um, there's a very good chance that you'll need to exceed that 600 in not too long. Mr. Kerr, would you like me to call on Ms. Cinda? And, or, I'm sorry, Madam Vice President also has her hand up. Madam Vice President first. Um, thank you. I agree with Cinda, and I'm not, I, I think we once we're there, um, Anucha, we have to get in there and do what we need to do. And I guess um, I'm not opposed to the 1,000 amps. So I'm, I'm ready to move forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Julia. How about Cinda? So, Mike comment now is, that I, and I'm hoping it's an easy thing, I think we absolutely have to go with the 1000 amp. But I understand the, you know, the possibility in the future of needing more. How hard would it be to get pricing on 1000 amp or 1200 amp service, just so we can look at it. And that'll give us an idea of whether or not we want to go ahead and think that far into the future. Is that possible? Well, okay, so what we have here is you have three conduits coming in from the utility pool. Two of them have feeder cables in. One's a spare. Okay, so 
if we can leave the existing two in, depending on what size it is, and only pull in a set of cables in the one spare pipe, it's going to save you a good bit of money. Once you go over that, whatever cable size you have in there and what we're going to pull in, we might have to pull out all three, all two sets of feeders in the in the existing pipes and pull three new ends, which is going to be very expensive. So let's identify what you have out there. Maybe tomorrow when Kevin goes out, he can do that and we can make a better decision on what actual size service we can put in. Possibly leave the two feeders, just change the meter and cabinet outside in the new um, panel other than running the extra spare raceway in to give you three parallel rods. So that's ex that's exactly right. And yeah. what Lou's saying is exactly right. And tomorrow, uh, I believe we're going to meet with uh, architects about the uh, expansion of the school, whether it's one or two additions. And, you know, um, the electrical engineer uh, that would have to be involved with the architect uh, with the new designs, that's going to dictate how much power needs that you're going to have in the new wing. And then the conversation has already started as far as expanding the existing school with air conditioning or any other power uh, requirements. So that's going to drive how right. much power you're going to need later on. You know, so okay. uh, that's that's going to be a work in progress right now. Yep. Thank you. And let's stay out of the rabbit hole. Tom, get us out of the rabbit hole. I think we've got consensus that we're going to move forward uh, with evaluating the size of the electrical system in the box. So, Tom? This is exactly the problem here with this conversation is that is that we're there's there will be a calculation of the of the power. It'll be submitted to Penelec. Penelec will size the size the transformer. They'll tell us what to do. So we could vote on this all night, but there's there's 27 steps between between today and actually laying a transformer in whether we need, you know, let's vote on the size of the wiring too while we're at it. So we have to get we have to get out of this mode here and look at the bigger picture. Right. Thank you. All right. So we have sounds like we have consensus to move forward with what we need to on the electrical system for tonight. And uh, you know, again, we'll get into more of that tomorrow and in the days ahead of tomorrow. I'll say, uh, I guess at this point, Mr. Vukovic, we'll move on to back to number one, the entryway. Because again, we need to know the entranceway and the classrooms tonight. Absolutely, thank you, Mr. Kerr. And thank you for uh, everyone else joining us tonight. What we did was based on your feedback in the last several months and last several committee meetings, we narrowed it down to two options. And at the last meeting, the one option that was requested was, what can we do with an office space that replaces um, the curb windows and puts the office space out there? That's option one. And then option two is us taking over two classrooms on the right-hand side to give us enough adequate space to have a new entryway there as well. I, on the, entry, on the um, agenda itself, they're both hyperlinked, but I have a small little presentation I thought we could show to make sure that you're comfortable with and have some discussions. Uh, and Elijah can help guide through and address any questions you can have, uh, you, you may have, right? Uh, but I think what we'd like to do tonight is, again, we don't have to get in all the details about everything, but we got to kind of pick, and if you agree, Mr. Kerr, do you want it on the left side or the right side, right? And I, I think, agree. And that would be helpful for Eli to get his work done and get things moving. And that's going to help us tomorrow at our work at our meeting. So, Mr. Kerr, are you okay if I just pull up the, the rather simple presentation I put together? Yes, sir. Does it have the most... Uh, up-to-date uh, plans in it from this it, afternoon it does sir so does the agenda i while you were talking i changed the agenda so if you hyperlink on the agenda it's and mr do you'd be proud of me it's a close-up um so you can see it uh, I, I i think i did a good job uh and i'll pull it up here real quick give me one minute mike i am going to take control okay and again at this point i'm going to remind everybody like tom had just mentioned these drawings that you're going to see are schematics. They are not final uh, layouts. So keep that in mind. We're not going to get on to radicals. And Mr. Kerr, are you, are you seeing my screen, sir? I am. Okay. So the purpose of the new space is pretty straightforward. We want a reception office area that's secure, that allows people to go in and meet with the principal nurse or guidance office, but limits their access throughout the building. As you know, as part of our safety update, 
and safety review. We've also been talking for several months about, you know, what do we want to do, where do we want it located, et cetera. Eli and his team came back, and he put um, one, two options, one that removes the curb with those options and one that would be on the right-hand side of the current front entryway. Again, the removal of the curb, curbed windows options, we requested at last meeting that we did remove them, and then we built in squared rooms to take that whole entire space to make sure it's sufficient and it gives us everything that we need. And if you look here at the next slide, um, it shows the square footage included and allows you to keep the two existing classrooms. And Eli, I'd like to turn over you and you could talk about, I'm assuming this red line is how you would basically remove that whole section of window and kind of build into the current lobby as well. As well, Is that correct, Eli? That's correct, yep. So Eli, how about you take five minutes and just go an overview, then we'll move on to the next one. And then we can go, if you're okay with Mr. Kerr, and have some deliberations after we had a chance to present both, if that's okay with you, sir. That's fine. Eli, can you give a nice overview of the benefits of this? To me, I'm assuming the benefit is you don't have to touch the two other classrooms. But I want to hear from you what you value, what you think benefit at, added value this brings to the district, this, this model. Um, thank you, Mike. Um, and thanks for putting this uh, presentation together on short notice. Um, the, the removal of the glass here uh, does a couple of things. Um, right now, all of that glazing is um, uh, not very ener energy efficient. It's also uh, it poses a safety risk uh, as easy access to the building. Um, so by um, putting the addition here, you remove the additional cost of replacing the glazing that would be part of uh, a scheme where you didn't uh, where you didn't touch it. You would still need to replace it with um, uh, the, the glazing is original to the building and um, like so many other things um, past its usable life. Um, so uh, one of the one of the um, great benefits here also is uh, you have a lot of uh, efficient spaces just by the virtue of them being rectangles and squares. Um, some of the other schemes we we're trying to honor the, the curve and uh, you run into some inefficiencies there as far as the square footage and the layout. But um, the, uh, the, the procession would, um, for all visitors, would happen now through the, uh, the entrance vestibule uh, to the east. It's uh, plan, plan northwest here, but, uh, and uh, remove the pair of doors that's going into the multi-purpose room right now uh, from that vestibule for, uh, for safety concerns. So that's not needed for egress. Uh, there's pr plenty of capacity elsewhere. Um, and so everyone would come in those doors, uh, come into the waiting room, and uh, there uh, you have a safe area for the receptionist um, to address any visitors um, and then direct them either, uh, you know, through the further admin or um, uh, get a teacher to guide them to where they need to go in the building. Um, this also allows, uh, there's a restroom that opens out into the lobby. So you have a um, something that would be more for more geared towards the visitors as opposed to students. However, anyone could use that. Um, and you have a way for the students to get into this secured admin wing without uh, going back through the vestibule. Um, what else, what else? One thing I'll add, Elijah, is the front entrance, which is on the school street, mm -hmm. would still be used for the school buses because the yep. street is wider there and that's where all this, the buses pull up to. So that entrance would still be used for the, for the bus. Thanks, Terry. That's a great point. Um, yeah, in, in that way, it creates a, a further separation of the students, where, where the students go in, uh, as opposed to adults and visitors. And, and, and I'll add one other thing, too. Those, both of those entrances now have full glass doors, and we would propose to still have that, but then put the smaller panes in like we did at East Pike, and then if you go, I'm going left to right across the page, right to the right of the word lobby, there's a double set of doors that go out to the rear of the building there. Again, that we could put all glass 
it's only partial glass in those doors now. It's a set of double doors. It has a transom, which is metal. We could put glass in that to, again, light that area naturally. And then on the toward the bottom of the page where the word vest or vestibule is, we could probably still put a, a couple panes of glass in there where you have the leader line going where it says glazing. That could also be glass there to also continue to flood that area with light, so natural light. And Elijah, um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to hear from Miss Eisenman and Mr. Trout. The way I understand it, one more time to make sure, because I am not as educated as everyone else on this. Parent drop off or people wanting to come meet the principal will come in this area where my cursor is. Mm -hmm. You would remove this door so no one else can get in that multi purpose room. We have another secure set here so people could not get through the building. Is that correct so far? That's correct. Yep. You would then eat into the part of the lobby beyond this red to the right of this red circle. School students and whatnot would still be dropped off here as well. Correct? That's correct. The buses. Aaron, you know, this is your building. You know, you have to give your input about the, what the layout and the features of this. And Greg Child, I'd like to hear from you as well because. What we have to do is, you know, really get consensus and make sure we're asking the right questions or there's some comfort because, you know, we want to move forward eventually. Um, I can go ahead and just give my two cents, Mike, if that's OK. Thank, and I want to say thank you to everyone for all their hard work on all this and for all your um, input and understanding and trying to get this um, done while we have the opportunity. Um, I like the way this is laid out because it makes sense to me and it allows for an even flow of traffic of the students through there and it keeps the adults and the students separated, which is one of the things that we have a difficult time right now whenever people come in the doorway. As you know, the people can just go anywhere and if we're not always you know, watching where the parents are going exactly, sometimes things get a little muddled. So this would allow for that separation, which I think is very important. Um, I like the fact that there's um, ample room and there's a restroom then for the parents to use and they're not going into the building and um, all the safety upgrades are something that I value very much. So um, I, I personally, I like this uh, overview because it does not give up any of the classroom space because if we start giving up classroom space, then we're going to have to build it on somewhere. So thank you very much. And that's my two cents. Greg, how about you from your perspective as field facilities director? What's your thoughts on it? Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, it, it is nice that we are going to have the area where the students will be going in and out by the waiting room by the nurse. Um, you're going to be real close to the cafeteria in case you have problems there and also from the back playground. They won't have to go very far. They don't have to go through a maze or, or anything to get to that uh, space. It's uh, centrally located between the academic wing and the specials wing. Uh, so it's close proximity to everything. Um, it is nice that it is set up that the students do, like, like you said, have the separate entrance opposed to even um, the administration. The one thing it would be nice to see, um, uh, it would be a, maybe a, a possibly a door for the principal that if something were to happen, there would be like a back door to to walk out only because of some of the other areas uh, where uh, people be coming in as far as like the waiting area and work area. Right now, there's only one way out. So if there was something that was uh, horrific in the waiting area, the principal could get out of the building or maybe gain access in through another area. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Mr. Kerr, I'll defer to you, but Mr. President has his hand up, sir, if you're okay with that. Yeah, go ahead, Walter. Yeah. Um, one question that, that um, I think we should ask here is um, you have showing double doors going into the waiting room. Shouldn't that shouldn't you have a single door there and then a single door over next to that purple area so that you actually create that trap? And again, I don't want to go down the, the rabbit hole, but it seems to me that a person coming into the waiting room, you're going to dump them right back out there and then make them go back through those double doors. Or if you had two doors in the waiting area, one is you come through the doors from the outside and then one dump you out into the lobby. Um, you know, I'm not an architect, but, uh, you know, I know there's a couple architects hanging out here. So, uh, yeah. Um, well, I noticed oh. that 
I know he's got two more, but let's not go down the rabbit hole. We'll take the comment and uh, move on, because again, this is just a preliminary sketch. Any other comments on this one? And, and no, just, thanks. Okay, thanks. And, and Tom, just I'm not going to take credit for the door of the bathroom. Going into the hallway, Mr. Trump came up with that good idea that uh, would serve the visitors and also the cafeteria right, being right across the hall from that. And Tamara, I saw you raise your hand. Um, so I don't know if this is a rabbit hole or not, but um, I think there should, we should maintain two exits out of the multi-purpose room. Am I understanding that the second one is gonna be eliminated? There's five doors going out of the multi-purpose room. I'm sorry, I'm in the car. I didn't hear you. There's what doors? There's five other exits okay. going out of the multi-purpose room. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Uta. Thanks, Terry. Um, I really like this schematic. I think if we're going to um, do some new construction to um, create the type of entrance and office space that we um, want and to mimic similarly and kind of learn from what we did over at um, East Pike. This is the one that uh, makes the most sense. I've got a couple of things that um, I've got questions about or suggestions, but we're not going down that, that, that path right now, which is fine. Um, and uh, I think um, it really does, um, we really should take into account what um, the staff who are gonna actually work in that building um, think is gonna be most helpful. Okay, thank you. Any other comments on this option before Mr. Vukovic moves on? Yes, Terry. I would just like to say that I'm glad to finally see it. And I'm, um, I'm comparing the, the sizes with the other, with the sizes of the rooms and the other option. How do these compare with East Pike? Did we, are the things that were too small at East Pike, the conference room and the nurse's office, are these significantly bigger to take care of that issue? We think so at this point, Cinda, the, the nurses area was made bigger, the counselor area was made a little bigger, and the conference room was made a little bigger. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. And Ms. Cinda, to address your concern, we are going to walk um, Elijah through East Pike tomorrow uh, so they get to see it up front and close to. Good idea. Thank you. Mr. Kerr, would you like to move on, sir, or wait? I would say move on. Okay. Uh, the second one, it was take two classrooms, which are indicated here at the bottom two classrooms. We thought one was not big enough. So we had an idea of two and Elijah worked that through uh, and it gives us enough space to work. And it, let's take a closer look though and see what your thoughts are about that one. So in this one, the curved windows would stay. Uh, can, you Elijah, blow that up? can you blow that up just a little bit, Mike? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can. It's not getting any bigger that way, huh? I mean, how's that look, sir? That looks better, thank you. All right. So, uh, Mr. Kerr, what, what we have here is Elijah can walk us through here. And again, I just like everyone's input and see what you want to do um, because this also meets their needs as well. We just really have to decide which one you want to go and which where you want to keep things. And how about Eli? I turn over to you. And again, Eli, if you could walk us through what the the removal of this door means and explain everything if you could for us? Absolutely. Um, so this scheme is very similar to the other one. Um, however, uh, as, as Mike intro, we're taking uh, two classrooms here and we would have to relocate them uh, probably in an addition um, for two classrooms, at least somewhere on one of the ends of the building. But um, looking at how this lays out, it does uh, preserve the curved glazing um, and the daylight and, and views that are offered there, as well as uh, 
a generous gathering space in the lobby. Um, that's that's sort of um, I think the the most compelling part of this design. Um, however, you would still have to uh, we would still recommend you replace all of the glazing um, on the curve and on those straight portions that are part of the protection of the lobby for both um, energy conservation as well as uh, the security concerns already noted. Um, in this way, uh, you would all but shut down. Um, or, or discourage access from the second vestibule, I'll call it, by the multi-purpose space. Um, signage can probably do that, uh, telling everyone to go through the, uh, the northern vestibule there. Um, what this does is, though it doesn't separate visitors and students, it gives you a single point of access where you would expect anyone to come into the building. Um, so that uh, whether that's a, a, a benefit or not, uh, we, we we're interested in to hear. Um, and uh, you have sort of a <clears throat> I can't I can't show my mouse here, but uh, the first pair of doors that you encounter on the exterior are open, and you can get that far and then into the waiting room. Uh, however, that second pair of doors, uh, the red, there you go, um, those are replaced and would be part of the secure glazing and um, the, the secure point um, that, that would be locked other, uh, otherwise. Um, and then it functions very much the same way as uh, the other plan does, where you, have, uh, you enter into waiting, uh, and then you can proceed past the working area, if allowed, um, to the other functions in the admin wing. Thank, thank you, Elijah. Um, I got to give credit to Mr. Harley. You know, Mr. Harley came up with this idea. We gave it to Elijah. Elijah then went in and put in this nice design for us. So you have two value, value, you know, very viable options that you have to really look at and decide which one um, you want to do. Because I think, you know, everyone seems to be working together. Again, Mr. Harley, we can't thank you enough for even coming up with the idea as well. And, and Elijah then taking it and, and putting it in design it the board can consider. So Mr. Kerr, I'll defer to you if you, we can see who wants input, but as you see, Mr. Kerr, we've done our part as bringing you, you know, two viable options here for you to look at and see where the board wants to go, sir, if you're most yeah. comfortable with that. Yeah, I'll say a couple things here, Mike, if anybody has any comments, please raise your hand. But uh, I think, too, we have, even though it seems like we're rushing this. We sort of are not at this point because we have discussed this for several weeks. Uh, there has been some iterations. Uh, we came with the two that, that rose to the top. The pros and cons have been discussed now. And, uh, so I'll put it up. I think Cindy might be first. Terry, Terry, you're cutting out on the on your microphone. Can you uh, can you repeat that a little clearer? Yeah, I just can you hear me now. Can you hear me now? Yep, now that you're better there. Okay, I'm standing up. Uh, yeah, I did, what I said was, you know, I don't think that we're really rushing this through, even though maybe, you know, we, we are acting like it. We have discussed this over the past several weeks. We've gone through some iterations of some different schemes and layouts and locations. These two seem to raise to the top. So these are the two options that were presented. Uh, so at this point, I'll open it up to Cinda. You have your hand raised. Yeah, I have a question about the, the second design that we were just looking at. It says outside of the waiting room in the working area, it says there's a security gate. Is that? to keep people from going down the hallway, the corridor along the classrooms? And if so, will there be a security gate going down the other corridor to so that, keep them? Pe what's the security gate, I guess, is my question. That's existing. Um, I've, I've never seen it uh, unrolled. Maybe, maybe Aaron can uh, fill us in on when that's used. OK, if that's what it is, I understand what it is. That's okay. fine. That's fine. And we haven't that's shown the second gate. Um, uh, we could, if if that's uh, something that the 
school would be interested in, but. I just um, didn't understand what, what it was. I understand what it is now and that's fine. Okay, anybody else have comments? Raise your hand, please. Aaron or Greg, you have any comments? Um, the only thing I'd like to say is that um, taking away the two classrooms does concern me a lot because um, we currently um, are trying to maximize our classroom use and possibly add an autistic support classroom. So that would be a challenge if we took away two classrooms and we'd have to put them back somewhere. How about Greg? Sorry about that. I couldn't hit the microphone. Um, yeah, there are some little things, but like I said, let's not go down a rabbit hole. Um, but it still does keep you close to everything. The other one is a little closer to um, the outside and the cafeteria, but I don't know how large of a, a deal that is. Okay, thank you. Senda uh, or Tom, you were going to get off the meeting, I think, so I'm going to call on Tom first. Um, I like this one in preserving the uh, the openness of Ike. I think it, I think it does a great job doing that. Um, Obviously, uh, if we put four real classrooms back at the uh, far west corner, which we're debating about, um, that's uh, a net gain of two classrooms, two real classrooms, not not the smaller ones that we had. The other thing is, is that uh, there's a series of spaces going down the south corridor that are going to that will be uh, able to be repurposed, and and I'm thinking that most of those spaces would be this would be. Uh, repurposed into the smaller units um, for for um, a small small group instruction, but there's a good bit of space down that quarter that some of the things Aaron that you're concerned about could be could be could be slipped into those spaces and and, and uh, renewed. Um, this is a lot gentler piece of work. I think we have an easier time getting it through zoning and getting the stormwater done on it, um, and um, I think it's very it's significantly less traumatic to the overall feel of the building. I also like the flow. I think that um, the majority of the people will go through that school street entrance and exit. We still have the other exit that we can use for buses on the uh, on Wine Street, but um, um, I think uh, I think this is a superior flow, um, um, and it certainly is very less, very much less dramatic to the building. It does it does use two of the classrooms, but that also means that it's going to be less expensive than a three thousand foot um, brand new building, uh, brand new addition. Okay, Terry, I'm going to go. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Tom, for everything and you know the work you did on your own too. Who Thanks, Terry. Uh, um, I just want to clarify. Earlier in the meeting, we were talking about. Um, that comment was made about addition or additions, and I don't want people to miss hear that. Um, what we're really talking about is an office area and replacing the modular classrooms um, that were um, destroyed in the fire. Obviously, if we take two classrooms to do the entrance, Erin's um, saying she's gonna need those two classrooms somewhere else. Um, I just don't want anybody to think that we're talking about, um, you know, huge additions that um, are anything other than what we've um, just talked about. And um, I am not, I do not do construction. It is not my area of expertise, but I would think that renovating existing space and then also having to add classrooms in the long run might cost us more than actually just adding the, the space for the office. Um, so I'm a, I'm more of a fan of the first um, drawing, but um, I don't think um, that uh, I think either one of them are are livable. Um, but obviously, um, we're all, we're gonna have preferences of, of one of the other. Okay, thank you, Tom. Channing. I, I thought about too. We looked at I looked when I was there Sunday. I looked at the busing. The, the street in front of the school was actually an extra lane width wide and there's no parking on the school side. So that's why the buses use that school street. Wine Street, which is too narrow for the buses, uh, you couldn't do the bus drop off on that side street. So, Walter, I think you were next. 
Um, I'll defer to the ladies if Tamara and Tammy want to go next. Um, you know, I'll certainly let them go and then uh, you can call me back later. Sorry. Uh, I'm not sure who was first. Tammy, you want to go first? Sure. Um, I just want to say that I'm really in favor of the first uh, schematic. Um, as a woman who has windows all through her house, even those that are insulated, I hate it. I'm cold. I'm freezing. I, I Or I'm smoking hot and the air conditioners are inefficient. So please, I love the first one. I'm just saying. Okay. Thank you, Tamara. Um, I'm also in favor of the first one. Um, I do not think with um, the growing needs, like Aaron mentioned, that we can sacrifice classrooms at this point in time. Okay, thank you, Walter. Yeah, the, the question, um, I, I would hate to have the decision be made on number one or number two without having that discussion on the classrooms. Um, but I it certainly, except Aaron, your position that you have to replace those two, um, especially the size that they are. Um, uh, you know, there's, I don't think there's any question that, that, that we can't sacrifice those two. The question for me is, you know, if we build four classrooms or six classrooms or two classrooms or whatever it is that we decide, you know, that I think should be kind of worked into the equation as far as whether you pick one or two. The main reason I'm interested in in the number two is there's there's an aesthetic value that's existed there, and um, while the East Pike certainly um, is attractive because it's new um, and it does have those those extra windows kind of there in the corner, um, you know I'm wondering whether something that is aesthetically pleasing as those curved windows shouldn't be preserved since it's already there if again if the decision is that you have to be sure that you have the classrooms and maybe we need to have that classroom discussion first and then see where the um the will of the board is on that one and and then that might help us um kind of come to the conclusion on on which option to go with walter um do you, uh, Terry, do you mind if I share my screen with the overall plans that you no. just presented? No, go ahead. Um, Tamara, this, do you have a comment? Where is the share screen? Elijah, it's, it was, see where it says Mike Neal's presenting? Just click on that, sir. Okay. And I think you can take over from there. If not, Mike can assist you. Can, uh, can everyone see my screen here? Yeah, we can see it. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, which might help inform everyone's decision making and and, and look at the, the classrooms in, in the broader scope, um, and also to speak to uh, Uta's comment. Um, let me zoom in here a little bit closer so you can see. So this is, um, this is the scheme where uh, we're talking about renovating. However, uh, there's going to be some addition associated with this with this scheme as well. Um, in addition to the the addition of the classrooms over here. So, um, however, uh, the total addition is approximately the same size as uh, in the other scheme. In this scheme, uh, you have a, a large addition over here. You don't need these classrooms. We, we left them there in case you wanted to talk about adding them on with this, but uh, you have a large addition and the admin space is going to be more expensive than classroom space. Um, and without drilling down too far, uh, so far we believe that the two schemes are gonna be about the same cost. Um, we'll be able to, as, as we get tighter in there and, and refine um, exactly what's going on. But uh, so far, the cost difference does not look substantial between the two, just because you're adding a, a larger addition, a more expensive addition associated with the admin um, and potentially not having to add classrooms. 
Whereas um, in this one, you have um, less expensive addition, but about the same size total added space, um, built out space for the new classrooms. Um, with this, you also have the option of adding two or six classrooms um, to help make it up. And, and one thing I didn't um, offer, uh, I forgot to mention this, um, I do believe that this scheme would be easier to phase as well. Um, I think that what you would do here is build out these classrooms, however many you need, um, and then you would go to do the admin wing and it would be less disruptive to um, the central space and, and continuous operation if that's something that needs to be considered. Uh, Tamara, you still have your hand raised. You okay? You took it down. Madam Vice President, I see your hands up. Thanks, Terry. Um, I mean, I prefer drawing number two, but I think we have to make a decision and not get into too too long of a debate. So I'm willing to support what the you know what the board wants to do, because I, I'm not opposed. The first one is perfectly nice. I just think it's going to feel awfully crowded for a bunch of people walking through. But Aaron, I, I certainly appreciate your opinion and I understand where you're coming from. But uh, for me, it's more than aesthetic on number two, although that's important to me because goodness knows we don't see a lot of pretty things all the time like this. But the, the beautiful thing about Eisenhower is its spaciousness um, and the ability for children to feel as though they, they can flow freely, freely through that lobby. Um, so I think it's a beautiful little school and I would, you know, overall, I'm still leaning towards keeping the um, lobby open. So thank you. Um, I appreciate all the hard work. I know this has been a lot of, uh, you know, like a puzzle putting it all together, but that's my overall feeling. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, I guess, do we want to go back to the entryway or we want to finish the discussion on the, uh, the classrooms here? Uh, Mark, Mr. Yes. Yep, Mark Mr. raised her hand. Let's let Mark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Mark. Barb, say anything, Barb? You're muted now. Try to get it. Okay. Elijah, can you repeat how a timetable might go for each design, like whether or not you have the first one or the second? So I think our, our main goal should be getting the kids back in that building as close as, as fast as possible. And so I'm kind of intrigued with your thoughts of building two classrooms and then coming back later and moving the office. Um, so we hadn't uh, we hadn't gone through a full um, scheduling or, or construction phasing discussion yet. Um, as far as as far as just absolute speed and getting um, shovels in the ground and getting kids back into the school, um, we would have to look at whether we think that this whole addition can be done and the rest of the renovation throughout the school. Um, it's, it's not going to be this summer, but, um, so the question would be how far it eats into the school year. Um, we've not had those discussions yet, Barbara, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but that is something that we're, we're considering and, and that's going to be part of the next discussions. Um, I don't think that the speed the overall speed and getting kids back into the school um, would vary one way or another. It might just be, uh, I think, easier for the contractor and therefore 
potentially less costly, maybe. Uh, that's that's one thing that I've been thinking about if you went with the second option presented. Okay, and I see Cindy, you raised your hand again because I think Barb hung up, I think. Yeah, Julia has her hand up too. She had it up first. Do you have another comment, Julia, or do you still have it up from before? Go ahead, Cindy. I'm not hearing anything. Okay, so just based on the the almost frenzy that has been going on and I think has been caused by just all of the stress of the last year and then the fire and just everything just keeps happening. I think we really need to be careful and not try to rush to get the kids back in the building. The fifth graders are perfectly fine and happy at the junior high. I think that's been a situation that went a lot better than anybody thought. Um, I think that if we have to wait until January or maybe even the, the fourth nine weeks before the kids get back into the building, whatever we can do, I don't think we should make decisions on how quickly we should get somebody back into the building because we never know what's going to happen. East Pike was supposed to be done in the summertime and it's that we're still not in that space. So we need to learn from that. The second thing is, um, talking about doing classrooms on the back and whether or not to, to um, do the addition on the front or renovate the classrooms into the office space. The addition on the front is a lot of the work, a lot of everything is going to be going on outside of the building and the workers can enter and exit from outside of the building. It could almost be built and and not even have people in the building. The other situation going in and renovating those two classrooms is going to um, have a lot of people in there and a lot of workers and, and necessary things going on in the hallways. And if the students are there, then that is going to be difficult. So I, I, I still think that the first diagram is the better diagram and um, Personally, I think from the the um, from the design, I think that it would be less disruptive for the students if we do indeed get the students back in and still have still don't have that office complex finished. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Mark, can you hear us, or can you can we hear you if you open your mic now? Hello, Barb. Because I, I was waiting to hear, Barb, which uh, option you liked or preferred. I don't know if you can put it in the chat room or try to call in again or something. You said the mic isn't working. That you can hear us. Do you have a comment as far as which option you prefer? I think I've heard from everybody else. Uh, Mr. Vukovic, I guess, do we want to talk about the classrooms more? I guess, Walter, you wanted to try to uh, have some more discussion on that, and then maybe Barb, you could. Yes, sir, it's fine with me if it's okay with you and Mr. President. Yeah, yeah Terry, I, I think we, sh we should, um... You know, leave this um, leave this ride at least till we have that discussion on the classrooms, and then we can go back and see um, see where that's going. Yeah, and I respect your question. I, I sort of think they're underrated, but uh, you know, we can talk about the classrooms. 
Yeah, so, Mr. Kerr, if it's okay with you, I thought Elijah can give an overview of what his thoughts were, and then I thought we can allow Aaron to kind of present what she's looking for and what she needs and see how those worlds meet. I, I don't know if that's the best way to go about it, Mr. Kerr, but that's the only way I know how to go about it, sir. Sounds like that plan. Elijah, do you want to go first, present to the board what your thoughts are and what you know what you put together? Because, again, we're going from four modulars to possibly either four new modulars or four new um, brick-and-mortar classrooms. So do you want to explain what your work is, Elijah? Now, and be, while you do that, Elijah, does it matter um, what um, scenario you have up, um, meaning regardless of we put it in the curb window or in the two classrooms? Are the, the additions still going to be the same place, sir? So if we are doing this option two where you have the where you're taking classrooms, you would need to build at least two classrooms. Um, I see I see Aaron shaking her head there. Um, and if you wanted to match uh, if you wanted two classrooms, two additional classrooms regardless, you would have to add four in this option. Um, one thing we have shown here is turning one of the classrooms so that you have access at the end of this corridor straight out to the playground. Um, and the, the dotted lines here represent um, additional 850 square foot classrooms, which is uh, what you have along the corridor here. Um, one thing of note is um, we would need to be mindful that um, we're with a sixth, well, yeah, sixth classroom here, you'd be over the property line, but as I understand, um, there's already been some discussion about um, joining these parcels, and so that would be a non-issue. Um, but I did want to uh, point that out. Um, the, the modular classrooms uh, were built up on um, post foundations, and uh, I, we wouldn't be looking to reuse anything from the modules. Um, we would also recommend that you build um, permanent classrooms while we're talking about um, the upgrades to the rest of the building um, to incorporate those and, uh, and, and set, yourselves, set yourselves up for the future in that way as opposed to more modular classrooms, which, um, let's face it, get, get used far longer than uh, they're intended to in, in most cases. We have a couple of hands raised. So, Cinda, or you just took yours down. Walter, do you have yours up? No, yeah, go ahead, Cinda. You said my name. <laughs> go ahead, Cinda. Okay. Well, my, um, my, my question to Elijah is real quick. Why did you select 800 feet or 850 feet uh, for the classroom size? Why not something closer to what's at East Pike at, a, at around 1,000? Um, 850 was um, close to the large size classrooms that are in the building currently, um, and so we assumed that those were adequately sized. There's, there's been some debate throughout the years in this community as to what the actual best size for classroom is. Some of the ones that go to Franklin are only around 700 or 750. The ones at East Pike, a lot of them are 950 or 1,000. And given our pandemic that we just mm -hmm. went through and social distancing and all, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think there might be some interest to take a look at what, you know, a 1,000 square foot classroom would look like, um, just based on the historical discussions, as well as trying to prepare for whatever the world will bring us in the next pandemic or however that might 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 work yeah comment noted send up um yeah so i can't see the diagram can you tell me elijah on the end i see the big red square where the modulars used to be right okay right oh put your cursor back where it was here? Down, down a little bit, down, 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 down. So stop. Coming out from the back of the building, you've got a yellow classroom that's being built on, and then lots of dots. Would mm -hmm. that be two more? Would that be places for two more classrooms to be built on 
going along the same trend? Correct. Coming okay. out in that same line is 12 and 13. Okay. And then and then up here then up there is two more. So I have the the one additional that I'm showing is as built the yellow. Yeah, correct. Okay. And then two more here as well. Oh, okay. I didn't see the one in the middle. So the one the one right beside the the right beside your cursor now the one that's future mm -hmm. is that do you have that inset is it kind of put back in so that there would be more windows on it or exactly it oriented the okay all right thank you mm -hmm. okay i think at this time we're going to hear from aaron is that right <laughs> It's up to you, sir. We're ready to go. Uh, Walter and Barb had their hands up. Would you like Aaron to go? Maybe that may address some of our questions. Or would you like uh, the board members to go first? Well, Walter took his hand down, and I think Cinda's going to take her hand down. Okay, and I apologize. I thought I saw Miss Parkers. I'm sorry, sir. Well, Barb asked a question in the chat room. What is the going rate for a classroom? Um, that's a, it's a good question. Right, right now, we're looking at um, 200 50 to 75 a square foot for um, for classrooms based on the current bidding climate that we've seen um, which which includes a lot of escalation and uh, market volatility um, I think we discussed it this in, in some of the past meetings but um, it, it's really tough to get a good estimate and um, we hope that these costs will come down. Um, this is far more than we've ever seen for for this sort of construction before, um, but we do want to be a, as as accurate and realistic for um, for our clients as we can be. Thank okay, you. go ahead, uh, Mike, if you want to introduce Aaron. And uh... yeah, thank you, Mr. Carr. I appreciate the opportunity. So. Uh, Aaron, I, we'd like to hear from you because like, I'm not in that building. You know what you need. And this is your chance to explain to the committee what you're looking for, what your thoughts are, and what would you do with uh, these replacement classrooms. And hopefully that can help guide the board in their decision making. And then if it's okay with you, Mr. Kerr, we'll give her a good chance, be good listeners, let her present. And then after that, we can address any other questions that we come in. Now, Aaron, I know you may have some different layouts or different ideas than what Elijah has. So we could share that tomorrow or today, however you see fit. But we want to let you present your case and your thoughts and let the board go from there if that's okay with you. That's great. Um, just before Elijah leaves the schematics, I do have two questions that I thought about about this design before um, we leave it, if that's okay. Um, I'm looking at the secured entrance there in that vestibule. If you're coming in off of school street, so the kids have to come in right there, yeah, where you have your cursor. If the kids have to come in that way because of the buses, they are then passing through that as their entrance into the building. Is that correct, Elijah? That's correct. Okay, um, I do have some safety concerns about that because parents and students could easily mix in there together. Mm -hmm. um, and then my other question is, if there's a medical emergency, then all the medical personnel and stuff have to come in that way and, and pass, it, pass that before they could get to the children and things? Um, correct. If, if, if they're going out into the school, they would have to come through this vestibule. Um, if they're going to the nurse, if the kid's already at the nurse's station, they would have to come uh, through this path. Okay, well, again, that's that's just a concern because of how, you know, the other way there's less disruption to the student body for a medical emergency is how I'm looking at it if it's at the nurse's office. So I that see. was a comment that I, was, I, was, I thought of after the fact kind of thing. So those are my two cents. Sorry about derailing. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but just point those questions. <laughs> So if um, if it's okay, I'll try to present my screen now. Yep. Okay, let's see if I can do this. I'm learning as we go. And Elijah, from your perspective, please ask questions too, because we don't know what we're doing. We think we have a good no. idea. <laughs> we think we have a plan. And Aaron worked hard on it. We want to be good listeners, but you know, we're going to work in collaboration, whatever the board decides to make sure it works. Fair enough? Okay. Absolutely. Not letting me share. Why not? Mr. Neal, anything you can help out, offer a suggestion? Yes, sorry, Mr. Neal, I need help. Hello. 
I stopped sharing mine, so I don't know if that was holding you up or not. See if you can share it now. I hit present now, and it just it, it won't let me share. It just says cancel. Hey, Aaron, how about you email me your presentation, and I'll pull it up, and I you can walk me through it. You have access to it, Mike. All right, give me one second, okay? Uh-huh. Sorry, guys. I'm learning. That's all right. But just to, as Mr. Vukovic gets that up there, um, uh, what I did was a lot of the information is similar to what I shared with you before whenever we went over that a couple of months ago about the academic programming in the building. Um, so it's very similar. A lot of the information is similar, but I did add this summary slide. If you want to go to the next slide, Mike. Um, currently, we use t about 10 classrooms um, a like a year. Five and five is usually what we have. Um, what I'm asking for is that to keep the 12 that we have in the hall, that allows for the life skills and for an autistic support classroom to be in that general wing on that hallway so that they would be in the ebb and flow of um, our general education. And that way all the students would be together like in that wing, which was something I'd heard earlier that you wanted to keep the kids kind of together in, in an academic wing kind of idea. Um, basically, um, then for special education, we would need four regular size classrooms and two smaller classrooms. But to Mr. Harley's point, we could absolutely repurpose some of that space so we wouldn't need to build all those as new classrooms, if that makes sense. Um, our specials, and this one, would um, we would need to replace this classroom. It was one of the modular classrooms, was the steam room. We just weren't currently using it this year because of COVID. But in future years, we'd like to you know, be able to have the kids get back together, build projects, do things like that. So we would absolutely need a room for steam, which was one of those rooms that was in the modular area that was destroyed. So we would that would be a new construction of a classroom, or we'd have to put it in the building somewhere. Um, there's some possibilities that we could do that in the building um, around the music area. But again, then we would be displacing some of the areas that we're using for cool down rooms and PBIS kind of activities. Um, we would st still need the e ESOL room. We would need a room that we could, should be shared with like PTOT and speech, outside services, school psychologists. Again, these don't have to be full size rooms, but they have to be decent sized rooms that they could use. And then of course, you've already addressed the office space so that you can, you know, that that is not necessarily. So if we wanna to go to the next slide, um, again, I, I just wanted to talk about the regular education classrooms. Currently we use about 10 a year. Um, for the classrooms. The two additional would be for any growth that we might have. Um, room 12 in particular, we're thinking could be the autistic support classroom because it does lead into the principal's office and that could be your cool down room that went with your autistic support classroom. So that would be a natural fit there because of that entrance way and those kinds of things. But again, nothing is you know written in stone. These are just some ideas. I'm not a, I'm not a contractor, so I might be speaking out of turn on some of those things. And then if we did have, if we weren't using those extra classrooms for specifically classes, because I'm thinking if we do have another situation like we did this year with the pandemic and I had to spread the kids out more or something like that, or if we had a larger class or a bubble group, we would need that room for actual classrooms. But we can also still use those rooms for uh, school-wide positive behavior support, reward times, um, emotional support students. Um, I'll show you later, we are going to have um, a few more next year. And if one of them's having a meltdown and another one's having a meltdown, you can't be in the same room together. So having two rooms is always a nice thing to be able to accommodate those students who have those needs. Um, next slide, please. Um, again, I just wanted to go over the life skills program. It's currently in that hallway. Um, I just gave you the numbers so you knew how many students we are um, servicing. And um, there are six that we'll be ser servicing this year and 10 next year. And um, also you have to remember with the life skills kids, our, our life skills kids are also out into the other classrooms. So there needs to be space in classrooms for them because they might be attending a social studies class or they might be attending a, you know, music class or whatever it might be. So those those classrooms have to be able to accommodate those students in those areas as well as having an actual life skills room. Uh, next. 
And then again, I just mentioned the emotion. Yeah, we did the emotional support. Now, learning support students, again, I'm just asking for the smaller spaces, and that's what like, Mr. Harley had rep um, talked about earlier. I definitely think we could repurpose some of those spaces and put them in those areas um, where the nurse's office used to be or the guidance office or those things. So those spaces would be for the, we could use for those areas. Next, Mr. And again, um, this is approximately two to three years down the road. I've talked to Mrs. Horchuk about that, but Ben Franklin's program, we will have students that will need to be with their same age peers in approximately two to three years. And if we're looking ahead and we're doing things, um, I respectfully would ask you to consider making sure that there was a classroom that could be utilized for artistic support at that point in time. And that would include a classroom that has bathroom facilities and having that cool down room like I kind of alluded to earlier. And then I just, the special classes are listed there. Um, the only consideration that we would have to make is for the steam room because that was in the modular area. And then the ESOL program, this year we only had seven students, but we've had up to 17 students in years past. Um, so we would need a classroom for small group work with them so that Mrs. Kent could meet with her students and provide those services. And then this, the other services, as I outlined on the first slide, just smaller places and spaces so that we could have them. Because right now, for example, when the um, counselor from the guidance center comes in and the PT's there, I'm, we have one in one room and we have somebody in Brenda's office and we're using all the different spaces. And um, sometimes we end up tripping over each other because we don't have enough smaller spaces for them right now. And I think that concludes um, my slides. And like I said, most of this information is very similar to what I talked about earlier um, when I gave the presentation um, a couple months ago, but I'd be happy to entertain questions or why I'm thinking that way and listen to any thoughts you may have. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess I'll start out with the first question, Aaron. Mm -hmm. is, is, is there any advantage, say we build, and I'm just gonna throw out four classrooms. Mm -hmm. Is there any advantage that any of those new classrooms would be the special classrooms? Because, and I'm going to talk out loud here a little bit, you know, a steam room, does it need any uh, fixtures or other, uh, you know, special desks or tables or laboratories or, mm -hmm. you know, sinks or whatever? Does the existing art room is it uh, functional or fully functional as an art room, or would that be better in one of these new rooms? Uh, would the library, or would what I would see is a uh, more of a multimedia, high tech uh, room, would that be better built new so it would be up to date? And then those other classrooms or those other rooms down the south hall would just be classrooms. That, that's a very good question, Mr. Kerr, and I have thought about that a little bit. Uh, again, not being a contractor, um, but looking at it from a pie in the sky kind of I idea, um, I think that we could pot that that would be a possibly a good idea if, if we built like a new music room, for example, because currently we're using multiple classrooms to try to house our music program, and if we built one music room with a band room connected and a storage area, that would be a more efficient use than trying to, to break up three classrooms that we're trying to currently use for the music program, if that makes sense. Um, also, uh, the multimedia center, I think that that would be a great idea to replace the library. Um, we, could, we could make a lot of different um, uses of that and we could provide the students with different things than just books in a room kind of thing like we have right now. As far as the steam room, um, we were going to just try to repurpose a classroom by putting some countertop and some islands in there, but a steam room with um, charging stations and um, countertops and collaborative areas in the room would be a real boost to the program and help Mr. Sheeran um, with some of the new projects that he's looking at bringing in with some of the grant money he got with some of the robot building and things that he'd like to do. So does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Because in my head, that's, you know, again, this is a, an opportunity that we have. And if we can design these, if we do build new rooms, if we can design them to this century with the uh, curriculum and, and everything that we want to teach. 
So mm -hmm. anybody else have any comments or questions for Aaron? Please raise your hand and Elijah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I was going to say, and, and this is sort of building off of um, thinking about Walter's comment before about giving you classrooms that are the right size. Um, you would, if, if you were to take them as classrooms, you would have some new classrooms that are a, a, at an expanded size, but you wouldn't have all of the grade at the same size. And I don't know if that's an issue or a concern, and that would be one thing that would... Um, um, push my preference in how these new spaces are used more towards um, what, what you've just described, Aaron, as uh, something more that's more, more specialized and more um, purpose-built um, as opposed to getting um, some correctly sized classrooms, if, if that's indeed the right term. Yeah, I think you explained that a lot better than Thank you. Trent, that's again, when you said that not all the grades would have the same, uh, I, I didn't quite understand what you were getting at there. Um, unless you built five classrooms and called that, or, or six, and called that a whole grade, um, you would have differing size classrooms for the same grade. Just because you you are only building, well, let's say you're building four classrooms, four new classrooms, um, you could say two go to fifth grade and two go to fourth grade or something like that, or you could say four go to all four go to fifth grade, but you would still have differing sizes in the in the mm. classrooms even in each grade. Um, okay, why would that be? Can you give me a little more? insight there if we were to build the new classrooms up to a thousand square feet or 950 whatever it was at east pike that seemed to be um as you were saying and i, I do agree more future proof or you know a little bit more comfortable for for larger class sizes um those would be larger than the existing classrooms Maybe I'm not missing. Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, no, I understand that. So I guess the question is to both you and Aaron, um, is there a significant downside to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. That, that would be a question for Aaron. Um, um, I guess it would depend on, um, like, if it's a life skills room, yes, that would make a big difference. If it's a regular class education classroom, um, again, it becomes a comfort issue and how many students can we get in the room comfortably or again, if we have to do things like social distancing and that kind of thing. Um, I think then it just it's, it's just more of a personal preference at that point from my perspective, as far as if you have 850 feet or a thousand feet, as far as like the teachers would want the bigger space so that they could move around better or do more things with like collaborative work, those kinds of things, if that makes sense. Well, maybe I'll say something to your question, Walter. Is I think what I'm hearing is you're you're limited by your smallest classroom size. You limit your class size to your smallest classroom. So if you have 850 foot classrooms throughout Eisenhower, but then you have thousand foot classrooms on this new addition, you still can only fit you know, the same amount of kids in the small classroom. So it doesn't help from a grade in classroom distribution, if that makes any sense. I, I, understand, I understand that, Terry, um, at least for those classrooms that are actually 850 square feet, but I would still think that if we had to social distance, um, and, and I'm thinking more, not so much cramming more students into the, into the room per se, but rather the distance between the students, again, if we have to social distance is really what's driving the question here. Um, you know, um, it would just seem to me that you'd have some flexibility 
um, when when Aaron pushes the panic button and says, "Oh crap, what do I do now? Uh, how am I going to put all these kids in 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 this space?" Um, um, you know, should have some additional flexibility or opportunities to to wiggle that. And and I'm also thinking that no, we can't change it overnight. But as we do build new um, new classrooms or remodel buildings or whatever, that providing some additional space for that social distancing in the future sort of makes some, a certain amount of common sense here just to be prepared for the kind of things we just went through this last year. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm not throwing you in that. I was just trying to explain maybe where Aaron and Elijah was coming from. Uh, yeah, I get it. Keep, Thanks, Terry. Okay. Keep this moving forward. I guess my question is going to be then, I guess, to Aaron, Mike, and uh, if we did option one, building the classroom or the uh, administrative suite to the left of the front of the building, how many classrooms, additional classrooms do we need? Um, three for sure, if for this to replace the two that were lost in the steam room, and then if you wanted to do a fourth one to allow for the autistic support um, growth, that would be ideal. Okay, so then I'm going to assume then if we build the administrative suite to the right of the entrance, uh, taking up the two existing classrooms then we would need five or six classrooms. That would be my estimation, Mr. Kerr. Aaron, there's a question in the, in the chat yeah. room. Um, there, back in the modulars, um, we had two learning support classrooms that were being utilized back there, as well as the, the room that would have been steam if we had not been going into the classrooms. Mm -hmm. So when I say the two that were lost, that was those spaces that would be lost that we'd have to replace. Okay, thanks. Senda, you have your mic open? Yeah, I'm sorry, I did. Um, I, I was going to raise my hand and I pushed the mic button instead. So, Aaron, let me, let me get this straight. So, if we use two classrooms to build the office complex, then you're going to want a minimum of five new classrooms built down where the modulars were that would be the minimum that we would need to be able to maintain the services i was providing prior to the fire mrs Broad. okay if we build the office complex out into the courtyard that saves your two classrooms in the building and then we would need to build on a minimum of four to replace just the modulars and if possible then maybe five um is that i i would need three for sure um the fourth would be um for like the autistic, the autistic. Support or yeah does that make sense okay. yeah okay thank you uh-huh Mr. Kerr, I couldn't hear you too well. I apologize, sir. Yeah. Any more discussion on the number of classrooms? I think Mr. And I see Tamara raised her uh, hand. So Tamara got it. So um, I really think we need to take this opportunity and be forward thinking. Um, we cannot ignore the fact that we have a two autistic support classrooms at Ben Franklin. We absolutely need to plan for those. We also absolutely need to plan for the for the um, need for emotion support space because we know that we have kids that struggle with that. We need that space. It would be reckless of us to ignore these needs at this point in time, this fire was a horrible thing, but it has also given us an opportunity to provide some for some of the needs that we need. We have also talked about bringing some of those elementary ideal kids in to our buildings. We need to add at least four classrooms, if not more. 
we have overflowing at Ben Franklin. We have pre-K classrooms that could possibly be at Ike. We only have 20 students in those pre-K classrooms. So the um, integration of the kindergartners, um, I don't believe they need to stay at Ben Franklin, the pre-K classroom. There is such limited space there. We have the opportunity to, under one general contractor, provide a lot of extra space for our district. And if we're upgrading all of the internet and wiring, why not put an ideal lab here? We have to be forward thinkers and this is the time to do it. So I don't know what rabbit hole this is going down, but we need to open our minds and think broadly and not think about just replacing what burnt down. Um, so I don't know, Erin, how you would deal with the additional autistic support classroom if we didn't add the extra space. I mean, it would be sad for us to come scrambling in two or three years and having to put up a temporary for these students. We have to think, and knowing that we're gonna have two AS classrooms at Ben Franklin next year, what is it gonna be in five years? We know that the, the, um, the prevalence is increasing and the needs are increasing. We need to think about those things right now, today. So that's all I have to say. I'm in favor of, of adding at least four classrooms, if not more, because we need to think, we need to think before we're thinking. Okay, thank you, Tamara. And, and those were good comments and didn't take us down the rabbit hole too far. But, and, and I, I'll, I'm gonna throw out too, the concept of doing the special rooms in this new edition, like the steam, the music, and that sort of thing. We don't have to decide that. That can be discussed between the administration and the architect and let them evaluate that and you know decide bring that back to a committee meeting if, in the future so i guess i want to move forward here uh it seems like we have the well uh, to me does anybody else have any other comments please raise your hand before i try to close this up here uh miss joya uh, Mr. Kerr, I, I stepped out for, I had to take, um, do something else for a minute, but um, so I've sort of missed the last 20 minutes of discussion and I'm sorry about that because I, I regret it, but um, I just heard the tail end of what Tamara Lieber said and I, I agree we, this, um, that we have to think bigger. So I would be in favor. I don't know exact, the exact issues, but four classrooms sound fine with me. So I just wanted to say that um, before we got much further. Thank you, Terry. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else have a comment? Please raise your hand. If not, I'm going to try to, you know, reach some consensus here on the classrooms and the uh, entrance location. Okay, not seeing anything. Uh, Barb did have a question in the chat room. How and many kids are in current classrooms? Um, we currently can put up to, we can currently put up to twenty seven in the classroom, but that is crowded. We try to keep it around twenty five. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, I guess I'm going to start out here by saying I, you know, I think we've had some very good discussion. As some people have mentioned, there's uh, some people have done some uh, their homework and some hard work you know getting us to tonight uh, had some very good comments uh it appears that the if this is a correct terminology the majority of the board that's uh present tonight which i think all nine have been here uh at one time or the other the consensus appears to be that they want the uh new admin wing or office space in the courtyard area and then it appears that people are the majority are in favor of adding at least four classrooms to the where the modulars were does anybody have uh and then i guess the question is is anybody in favor of any more than four classrooms at this time so 
Tamara, I think you still had your hand up. So I think Cinda, go ahead. So if the reason why I was asking Aaron the questions I was asking, so if we put the admin area in the courtyard, then we would need at least four classrooms, which is basically just putting back what we had. So considering that I do agree with Tamara that we need to be very aware of what's coming up through the, through the uh, system and the fact that there are more students being um, identified as autistic. And I, I think that that is a situation that's going to keep increasing then if the courtyard area is the office, then I would not even be opposed to adding five or six classrooms, um, making sure that we can have the the maybe the ideal lab, making keeping our options open, but also being very aware that what we have now is probably not going to be the way education looks going forward. The, the pandemic has changed a lot. We've got a lot more special. Um, I don't want to say special needs in, in that way. We've got more specialized areas in the building that we will be able to be using in the next coming years. So I'm, I'm leaning for totally putting the office complex in the courtyard and building at least four classrooms, preferably five and maybe even six. Okay, thank you. Uh, Uta. Um, yeah, I, I really liked what Tamara said about us really kind of making sure we take advantage of this opportunity and not in a in a like negative way, but um, that we really kind of um, embrace the opportunity that we have and think of how and what kind of space we might need at um, Eisenhower if for example, we need to relocate pre-K or we want to have um, an ideal room or we need to provide additional autistic support. Um, so I too think that um, at a minimum, um, we're looking at four classrooms, but I as well, if the funding is available, would be okay with going up to six. Um, I think the office space that then is vacated uh, might be able to meet some of those smaller meeting um, rooms and meeting spaces that um, um, Aaron spoke about. So um, I think um, it's, this is exciting. So thank you to everybody for all, all the work that's gone into this. Gary, did I hear an echo from me? Is that correct? Yeah, you're up. Okay. Um, but as far as the classrooms go, I think um, I agree with Tamara. I think we should build out as as much as we as we possibly can. Um, again, um, at least replacing the four that we lost in the fire, and if there's an opportunity there to build a couple more. Um, whether it's for the special needs situation that she's identified or, or for some other um, unknown, I, I certainly think the building the extra capacity at this time will not, will not go to waste one way or the other. Um, the, um, uh, I, I still like the idea of the uh, um, office on the right side of the, or on the west side of the uh, entryway there. Um, which would certainly ne necessitate uh, building the six classrooms to replace those two. Um, I actually actually think it would be cheaper to do that um, based on the input that Elijah put in there that the your per square foot uh, cost of building a classroom is um, probably in the hundred dollar square foot based on our uh, what we saw over at East Pike. Um, and so if we're going to add the extra space, um, uh, the floor space, it, it would be better to do it as um, um, as classroom space rather than rather than as the more expensive office space. Plus, again, as I said earlier, um, you know, Terry, you may be right. The 
the overall consensus is um, um, maybe headed towards option one on the on the office space. Um, but I will also throw out there that um, if there are some objections to that, um, we could resolve it at Monday night with a uh, formal motion um, uh, choosing one or the other that would, you know, kind of, um, you know, bring it to a, um, uh, a conclusion one way or the other. Cindy, you still, thank you, Walter. Cindy, you still have your hand up. You I forgot to put it down, but in the meantime, I asked Elijah. I think Walter said that East Pike was $100 a square foot was the cost, but with construction stuff at least doubling and almost tripling now, is that, Elijah, what did you say? Did you say 250 to 275 a square foot? Send it, send it yeah. just one second. What I, I'm sorry if I, if I didn't, didn't correctly state that. Okay, I'm just confused. I, I think that we spent somewhere north of 300, uh, I think it was closer to 350 a square foot um, at East Pike. And what I was suggesting was if Elijah's figures of 250 and we were at 350 at East Pike, there's a hundred dollar square foot swing. Granted, I didn't calculate the inflation uh, that you were essentially asking, asking Elijah. Okay, I was confused. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that clarification, Walter. Um, yeah, we're we're looking at two hundred and fifty to two hundred and seventy-five on a classroom right now, and we were assuming um, three hundred up to three hundred and fifty on the admin area. Um, but it sounds like if that's what East Pike went for, it, it unfortunately could be more than that. Which that that's <laughs> really really ridiculous. But I I know that that's apparently how things are now. Elijah, uh, Jared would have that. I don't think he's on the call with us tonight, but he could get that information to you relatively quickly tomorrow um, uh, for whatever comparison that you, um, you know, you may, you may want. That'd be great. Okay, anybody else have any comments? Please raise your hand. Not hearing anything or seeing anything. Uh, well, I think it's a good idea to have a in a, a formal vote Monday night, but I think that you know my feeling is that we reach sort of an overwhelming consensus tonight on the location, and uh, that'll help our meeting tomorrow. Uh, and then the number of classrooms. What I'm hearing is minimum four, possibly up to six, but at least if we can go with the four at this point, I think that helps Elijah and uh, the, the staff and, and the electrical contractor and such. So I think that's the three things that we wanted to accomplish tonight was the electrical, the number of classrooms and the location of the, the office. So here's like we, we did that. Uh, I'll throw it back to you, Mr. Vukovic, for the rest of the agenda. I can't see the, well, I got, I could go to another screen here, but. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vukovic. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Neal, can you please scroll down a little bit? So the next yeah. one, next one I'd, we'd like to talk about, Mr. Kerr, I'd like to turn it over to Jared. As you know, the board originally allocated $15,000 from some of the schematic design work. And we just need the board to start thinking about how you want to approve additional work and fees for the Ike project. Uh, based upon tonight, we know we we think we have may have, maybe have met the location, you know, for the entryway. But moving forward, there's going to be some additional work, and the board just really needs to think about how we want to go forward and continue that. And Jared, and I'll turn it over to you because you and I talked about it. But if you can further clarify, yes, sir. Uh, and I think it'll be you know we'll need some input too from Elijah and and Bukhart Horn as to how we how we move forward in the next phase of this because I you know we have some good consensus tonight and some good direction uh, but we still need to work out the kinks as what type of project we are looking at um, because we can either do this on a you know a, a 
be not to exceed for certain for certain stages or we can look at it as a percentage of a total project and we i think we need to work that out as we get some more clarification here as to what type of project we're actually looking at um, but that'll be a lot of input both from elijah and you know bucard horn as well as the board to make that decision here pretty soon but Bucard Horn needs to collect some type of fee for the additional work that they're going to be doing above and beyond the schematic design um, here in the next couple of weeks so that we can move this project forward. Um, but we will have that conversation and may even have something for board approval or board discussion as early as Monday night. And, and I think, Jared, I think this is good sequentially that we're now talking about this because what I don't want to do is go back on a time and material type or whatever uh, standpoint. I'd rather lock in a uh, price and that's sort of goes back to our last three topics is the better that we can define our scope renovation and our additions, the easier it is is to negotiate a price with Bucard Horn. So I think that's very important that we do that in our next step here. And Terry, we would we would completely agree with that. Um, uh, just just working on time and material uh, or you know hours um, gets can can get both of us in trouble. We want to have a clear understanding of what we're doing and and providing that for you. Right. And it's going to save us time and money, both, you know, definitely the owner, us, you know. So keep that in mind, I guess, everybody that's, you know, the board and the administration, that the, the better we can define things here going forward. And we make, you know, good, good steps here tonight. So any other questions, comments on, on this? And like Jared said, this is timely. We will have to get this figured out here sooner than later because uh, Bucard Horn is out of money. And for them to continue, uh, they're going to need to know how they're getting paid. So nothing else we could move down to. I think we got everything under the agenda items, correct, Mike? We can move down to non-agenda items. And we already did number one. So the only other thing was an update on the senior high turf. And that was just, I raised the question of whether we could put the feather through the eye. Uh, Mr. Trout worked with the, the contractor or supplier and it'd be in our best interest and not to put the feather there because of the way the, the turf would have to be manufactured and seamed. It would just create some weak spots in the, the fabric and the turf. So they recommended us not doing that. And then there was a link to the final mock-up uh, that they made some uh, tweak to it. So Cindy, do you have any questions? And then I don't know if Mike or anybody could bring up that mock. Mr. Neil, can you click on the final mock-up? And, and before Ms. Cindy goes, Mr. Kerr, the one thing yeah. I need from the board um, Mr. Harley brought up last week, and I'm going to turn it over to um, Greg Trout to explain. If we keep the in circle white, there has to be those shadow lines, as you can see. We can make it not white. I just want to make sure you're okay with that. Like, I'm a little annoyed by it, but I'm not annoyed by it, right? Like, I can live or die. It really doesn't bother me too much. But we could take the white out as well and just leave a red circle. But um, I didn't want to interrupt you, Ms. Cinda, but I, I kind of want to make – Greg, let me turn it over to you. If that's okay, Ms. Cinder, let Greg explain, then we can address any questions. It's well, not a problem. I just had a question for Terry because he said we were done with the agenda. So let's finish this, and then I get a question right at the very end. Deal. Yeah. Okay. And let me ask this, Mike, before Greg. Do we have what the red looks like? Is that what it looked like before? or? Well, the, the previous we, always had the white circle, uh, we always had the white circle filled, and the one on the field we have now has no white circle filled in. It's just a red eye. And we, you, um, Tom Harley, Mr. Harley asked Greg Lozani to go back and talk to PIAA officials. So I believe he talked to someone, and they're saying you should have shadow lines. And I had Greg Trout fact check that with the provider. And I, Greg, can you speak up and make sure I'm not misspeaking at all? No, you're, you're spot on on that. Um, 
our last mock-up that we had where the yellow line, which is a soccer line, your your sport lines supersede logos or what what you'd like to have desired. Um, the last one showed a the, the red and, and black, um, and that would not be permitted uh, as far as regulations. That's why the yellow soccer line it, or circle is surrounding the white infill. Now, if you remove the white infill, you can eliminate that uh, shadow lines that you're seeing at the, both 45 yard lines. And I believe um, currently we have a line going through the middle of the eye. Um, we, we do, I checked that on Google Earth. Right, it, and I looked actually on the way home too, I looked down over the hill. <laughs> so I don't know if we still have to have that shadow line on, uh, which, which would be gray, would be black. Uh, so probably be a little, le little less noticeable. Um, so th those would be the changes that you're seeing from what you currently have. If you do want to keep the white, um, this is exactly what you would see. Could we, and I think to be fair to the board, I think we need to see the other mock-up. And I'm, I'm really not in favor of the white either. Uh, I think it's I, I don't like wearing white shirts, especially when I'm eating spaghetti. And uh, that 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 whole white area just looks like a, a future problem of keeping it white. And I don't know, if Mike, that's what you're not in favor of the white whenever you... Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, and I don't mean to be forceful when I say this. I'd like you just to pick tonight because... Um, we're trying to lock this in and get this done before school starts. And I'm afraid of prices getting jacked up and locked up. I'm not sold on the, I mean, I'm not married to the white. Do I like it? Sure. Do I, will I die on that hill? Absolutely not. We're getting a brand new field. It looks beautiful. It's going to be great for kids and the kids are going to be safe. Don't really care. Okay. How about you, Ty? Um, my, I have two questions. One is perhaps we get rid of the white and just do a black circle around the outside of like where the outside of the white is right now. Um, but I can live with just the eye. Um, and then my other question is currently um, on the field where the lacrosse goal sits, there's a hard area. Um, is that going to be, is that, does that have to be there? And is it gonna be as pronounced as it is on the current field? Greg, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you mean by a hard area, but the, the lacrosse like lines it, are now I, okay. not the line where the goal sits for lacrosse. That okay. part of the field is harder than the other parts of the field. I don't uh, know what's know, underneath it, that. They're, they're, the surface is different. Well, it's probably what probably has occurred. The reason it appears harder, uh, and the reason all the, the turf appears harder and that's where you start to lose your um your test for your concussion testing as the fibers wear down uh, and that's part of your forgiveness so it, as you wear that down you be you starting to see a harder surface because you have less cushion you are now on, on top of the crumb rubber so that's why it appears to be harder okay um, the, the more it wears down so and the reason for that is that's an activity area or a very active area so you wear fiber down more, especially even in football. When you're down in those areas, that's why you're going to see – you see a lot more play between the 20 and, and goal line probably than you do the rest of the field. So you're going to see um, significant wear in those areas. So that's why it would become thinner fibers and uh, um, more hard, like what you're okay. discussing. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Mike, though. I think at some point we just need to – bite the bullet and make a decision. So if we don't like the white, maybe we just get rid of it and just have the eye and call it good. Yeah, I'm with you too. I mean, if you don't like the white, we can remove it and get this done. Is that, yeah. is that okay, you, Mr. Kerr? Anybody, anybody opposed to getting rid of the white? May I ask a question? Sure, so I didn't know if you were still having your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, no, I put it up again. So. I don't, somebody said something about the yellow lines for soccer and I can't see on this, 
um, picture. If is there a yellow line going around the white where yes, the eye is? Yes, ma'am. So if we take away the white, then the red eye will be encircled by a yellow line. Yes, ma'am. And it has to be yellow because that's stalker. I, I believe so. Greg, can you confirm? Yes, that is correct. And that's currently how it, it, it is right now, too. We, we do okay. have the, the yellow circle around that uh, the single red eye that's on the current field. Okay. All right. So I don't, I don't care if we get rid of the white because I think part of what makes me like that white is that circle. But if the white is gone, then the yellow will will go around the eye and bring the, the eye out, make it stand out. So I think the white can stay or leave either way, but taking it away is okay. Okay, anybody else have any comments on the turf? So it sounds, sounds like we're taking the white away. Greg, are you good then on your answer? Yes, sir. That, that's perfect. I will uh, contact Ray tomorrow and let him know that we accept the the um, final rendition that we current that I mean minus the the white going around it, and he can start that into production, which is what he's been asking for. Uh, he called me again today, um, kind of in urgency, stating that it, we really need to make this if we're plan on having uh, it completed when we were. Uh, hoping to have it and also uh the locked in price we're getting dangerously close if not he may have extended even a little bit for us he originally told me the end of the month uh, april 30th so uh we will be able to lock in the price before we would see uh, uh, another um increase in product and greg hey. while you're on the call greg mr kerp it's okay with you fencing was on the next item related to this can greg go into details about that if that's yeah. possible Yes, please. Okay. Yes, I've, I've been having some difficulty, and believe it or not, uh, some of the, the fencing companies that, that aren't in our county have told me that they're busy, so busy that they're not even going to come up and give me a bid. I did get a second bid, and I have a third person coming on Monday. We It's a significant reduction in price, um, so if the board would be approving this uh, maybe on, on Monday night, uh, the current bid that I have is 3950 as far as a low bid. Um and if I get a one that's even lower than that, we could accept uh, like not to exceed the three thousand nine hundred and fifty if the board so desires. Mr. Well, Craig, I, I think we're already good, Mike, because we already approved it not to exceed six thousand. So. Okay, we just want to make sure that the committee's okay with it. Then, Greg, you feel comfortable moving forward? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Curran, that's okay with you, sir. Yes. Okay, um, Mike, Mr. Neal, can you go back to the agenda? And I think Ms. Cinda had a question. We promised her um, a moment. I just want to know, did I miss it? I had to leave for a phone call. Did I miss us talking on number three about the parking area? No, we sort of, I, I apologize. I skipped over that. And again, that's sort of a rabbit hole. We, we the idea though, I will explain it. Uh, the concept is if we, it seems like we are going to put, you know, at least four classrooms back where the modulars were, maybe six. We could make that area uh, uh, perpendicular parking to School Street, so you could fit at least 20 cars there, probably maybe more. You know, we could extend School Street so that was that discussion but we'll have that discussion some more tomorrow with the architect and okay i didn't know if it was necessary to talk about it tonight because before the meeting tomorrow no, that's good but question what meeting okay. is tomorrow excuse me what meeting is tomorrow the administration is going to meet with the architect Buchard Warren, and then also the eisenhower general contractor stefan and sergeant electric and but the board, the board is not required asked to be present, correct? Correct. But I was going to attend, and I'm not sure if anybody else is or not. Hey, Terry. Yes, sir. Um, on that point, I uh, just wanted to confirm, are we meeting at Eisenhower? We're going to first meet at East Pike. Okay. And then, you know, have some discussion there, take the tour of the East Pike uh, new office. 
and then go to Eisenhower. Perfect. Okay, anything else? Not hearing anything, appreciate it very much. Uh, I think the meeting went well. I think we reached some consensus. Uh, and I'm sorry that everybody, you know, everybody's being flexible and, uh, you know, going along for the good of the order, and which is what's important. So I very much appreciate that. And uh, see you all Monday night. Thank Terry, you. thank you for a good meeting. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Terry. Good night, Bye. everyone.